The boxers have been given their instructions. The seconds are out. The crowd is ready for another edition of Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing with your presenter, the boxing historian, Greg Rashid. Well, I want to say swatty cop to everyone out there. This is Greg Rashid with another edition of the Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast. I will be your presenter today, as I always am. Well, sometimes I may have a guest on here subbing for me, but it's basically me. And I want to thank everyone so far who has been listening to the shows. The positive feedback I've been getting from so many people about this show, this really makes me feel good. It really makes me feel good. And I've done other shows that I've talked about previously on this pro- on my program here. You know, I've been doing this type of stuff for over 20 years. But it's really good when you start something new, especially when you're a senior citizen. And I just turned 70. And people love what you're doing. It just makes me really feel good. So I just want to thank everyone out there, you know, in the U.S., in um, places like Kenya, England, a little bit of everywhere. People have been listening to this program. And, oh, yes, if I haven't said anything, I'll say it again. I'm in Bangkok, Thailand. I retired here, really love it here. and But I just like doing this show and just broadcasting and just getting the positive feedback and just, you know, just talking to folks throughout the world. Just so great doing this. So I'm just so happy to do this, as you can tell by my voice. And my voice may sound different because I actually have got a new mic and it's probably coming in much, much clearer. And I can tell by just listening in my headphones now, everything is much clearer. So hopefully there will be no crackling or anything like that. The only crackling you'll hear there's maybe some noises outside because right now, just below me, there are some young uh, people playing soccer. There's a soccer field right over by where I live. And, I, and a lot of people like to hear the ambient sounds that come from Bangkok, where I am. But anyway, this is the Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast. And today, I want to say this. that um, <clears throat> What I usually do at this time, if you're, lis- if you're listening... On the weekend of January 14th and 15th, every show I've done, I've honored the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who was born January 15th, 1929. Now, I'm not going to do a whole show about Dr. King. I'm not going to do it, but I am in a sense because this is a boxing show, and I want to talk about this real uh, briefly here. As some of you may know and some of you may not know, You know, he really was a big supporter of Muhammad Ali when he decided, when Muhammad Ali decided he was not going to the Vietnam War. He was a conscientious objector. He didn't want to do it because of his religion. And everyone was against Ali at that time. And, you know, now you'll hear everyone saying they loved Ali. But if you check the history, 66 to 1970, there were a lot of folks, especially in the back black community, I got to say it, who didn't like Ali, who refused to call him by his name. There's so people, I remember people in my neighborhood that still called him Cassius Clay. But there were a lot of folks that were upset that he not go. He didn't go to the Vietnam War. He didn't go to Vietnam. And as we've shown in history, that he was right. It was an unjust war, a costly war, and a waste of time. And as someone who lives near Vietnam and went to Vietnam a number of years ago, I can tell you, and I never went to the war there, but went over there, it was a waste. It really was a waste. But I'm not going to get, you know, not going to get into all that right now. But what I want to do right now, I want to play, before we get to our main event, I want to play two excerpts. And these are from um, excerpts of speeches of Muhammad Ali and Martin Luther King talking about the Vietnam War. This first one is uh, King and Ali together and their thoughts on the Vietnam War and what, you know, what they think. So let's listen to this on the Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast. What did you discuss back in the hotel room? Nothing, just friends, just like Khrushchev and, and uh, Kennedy and <laughs> everybody. When the people, all of the politicians of all other white races come together, and they, although they believe different, they think different, whites can come together and discuss the common cause. But whenever a few of us come together, the world is shook up. And I say, whatever went back there is our business. Reverend King, do you agree? 
Oh, yes, yes. We had a very good discussion uh, on uh, many matters. And, of course, these are not things that we would discuss here. But uh, we do have common problems and common concerns. And above all, as uh, Muhammad Ali has just said, uh, we are all victims of the same system of oppression. And even though we may have different religious uh, beliefs, uh, this does not at all yes, bring right. about a difference it's in terms brothers. of our concerns. Still brothers. Do you Thank share you the same, do, one more question, do you share the same concern uh, that uh, Muhammad has for his draft status? Oh, I certainly do. Uh, you, my, my views on the draft are very clear. I'm against it. And I think the sooner our country does away with the draft, the better it will be for everybody. I'm di very disturbed about the militaristic posture of our nation. And I think until we have a radical reordering of priorities in our country, uh, we are going more and more to the depths and, I should say, to the doom that follows arrogance of power, as Senator Fulbright said. And I say this morning that it is my hope that every young man in this country who finds this war objectionable, objectionable and abominable and unjust but file as a conscientious objector. And no matter what you think of Mr. Muhammad Ali's religion, you certainly have to admire his courage. Dr. Martin Luther King and before that Martin Luther King and Muhammad Ali. Hope you enjoyed those little excerpts there. You know, and usually on my show, I will play the whole speech of why I opposed the war in Vietnam, the Martin Luther King speech uh, given it originally at uh, Riverside um, Church, and later on he did it again at Ebenezer Baptist Church. I'm not going to do that today. I, you know, if you are really interested, please check that out. As well as check out some of the writings of Dr. King, because there's so many people... They know about the I Have a Dream speech, but he did so much more as far as writing. Amazing writer as far as with theology, social justice. It's a little bit of everything. Yeah, check him out when you can. Uh, spend, you know, spend the day if you're celebrating. You know, everyone's on, you know, I know in America it's a holiday for King. So celebrate the birthday by learning something about him. Learning a little bit about him. As well as learning a little more about him. Uh, our featured fighter today, Muhammad Ali. There's a lot of folks still don't know a lot about him. They know about his fights, but they don't know his background and everything. So do that. But today, what we're going to do is we're going to have um, a what if uh, bout here of Muhammad Ali versus Joe Lewis. And I picked Joe Lewis because as well as Muhammad Ali had a cultural significance, not only on just boxing fans, but the world in general. Joe Lewis had the same thing. If you know anything about Joe Lewis, Joe Lewis was just uh, amazing. You know, what he did for not only the black community, but the general community and throughout the world, what he did is just being a shining example of a great athlete and a great humanitarian and just a human being, just an just amazing guy. So I'm pitting these two against each other. And so far... Uh, Online, I've got a number of people that have said, well, Muhammad Ali's going to win that. You know, and Ali used to talk about uh, Joe Lewis being too slow and he would dance around him and all that. And that could be the case. And I always have to tell you, you know, these, you know if you're new to the program, I use title bout to boxing PC simulator. And I put it in the computer and put these fighters in there. And I don't know what's going to happen. I don't like switch things up. And change things. I just put names in there and say, okay, spit it out. What's going to happen in this? And as I always say, these fights aren't etched in stone. It's just what if. It's our imagination. You know, this is a theater of the mind that we're doing here. And, you know, and like I always say, a lot of you, I know you spend time saying, oh, what, what would happen if Muhammad Ali fought Joe Lewis? What would happen if uh, Mike Tyson fought Tyson Fury? Or Sugar Ray Robinson fought Sugar Ray Lane Leonard. Well, this is what my show is all about. And it's just a what if. It's just to sit back, relax, get your favorite beverage, 
If you've got your buddies with you, sit around or your family and just talk about it and say, wow, this is really something. And just relax your mind. Just relax your mind. Just enjoy this theater of the mind at its finest. And so what now we're going to do right now is the Ali versus Lewis fight. And my buddy, Shoulder Roll Steve, will be the commentator. And so let's sit back and listen to this on the Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast. And again, I'm your presenter, Greg Rasheed. Sit back and relax. Today's bout from the polo grounds pits two of the legends of boxing, Muhammad Ali and Joe Lewis. There is a standing room only crowd at the stadium to witness this match. The crowd is orderly except for two promoters who were arrested outside trying to sell bootleg mixtapes of Ali singing. The referee today is Frank Cappuccino. The judges at ringside are Lisa Giampa, Toby Irwin, and Paul Cavalier. The judging is on the five points must system. Settle in now because this one should be a classic. The bell sounds for round one. Joe Lewis races to ring center and immediately lands a two-point left jab followed by a combination for five points that stuns Muhammad Ali. Ali was not expecting Lewis to come out so aggressively. Lewis follows with a partially blocked one-point right uppercut, then misses with a combination. Ali counters with a partially blocked one-point combination. Lewis lands a two-point left jab. Lewis lands a three-point combination that appears to have stunned Ali. You can never tell with Ali if he is playing or not, but judging by the way his left knee almost touched the mat, he may be hurt. Lewis lands a two-point cross to the stomach. Ali is circling around Lewis, first to the left, then right. The fighters are in ring center. Lewis lands a two-point right uppercut. Ali clinches and tries to use his right hand to pull Lewis's neck down. Capacino warns Ali not to do that. Ali is dancing about the ring while Lewis is slowly trying to cut off the ring. Ali misses with a left cross. Lewis counters with a left cross for six points that stuns Ali. Or is he playing again? Ali clinches. The bell sounds to end round one, a dominant one for Joe Lewis. Angelo Dundee is screaming at Ali to get serious. Drew Bundini Brown is in tears. Ali looks at the reporters in press row and winks. Points scored in round one. Muhammad Ali won Joe Lewis. 26 round two begins with the crowd wondering when Muhammad Ali will start fighting. There are some boos for Ali as he steps to ring center. Lewis clinches Ali immediately. Lewis may have punched himself out in the last round. He misses with a right uppercut and left hook. Ali stands flat-footed to land a three-point left jab. Louis lands a three-point left jab. Louis lands a three-point cross. Louis lands a five-point right uppercut. Ali looks hurt as he backs into the ropes. Dundee is screaming at him to stay off the ropes. Ali is using the rope a dope on Lewis, hoping he will tire out. Lewis lands a left jab for six points that get Ali's attention. Ali is talking to the reporters at ringside, telling them he is not hurt. Brown is screaming for Ali to use his own left uppercut that he learned from Sugar Ray Robinson. Just as Ali turns his head to respond to Brown... Lewis lands a right cross for six points that floors Ali. Ali is kneeling on the mat, then jumps back up at the count of nine. Ali backs up into the ropes and dares Lewis to come forward. He tells Lewis he hit him with a lucky punch. Lewis loads up on a five-point combination as Ali remains on the ropes. That combo appeared to glance off Ali's shoulders. Ali is pretending that he is hurt. Referee Frank Cappuccino is not buying it and calls a halt to this fight at the time of 2.22 of round two. The winner by technical knockout is the brown bomber Joe Lewis. Ali's corner races out to confront Cappuccino. Drew Bundini Brown pushes Cappuccino to the mat. A riot has broken out. Fans are throwing bottles and chairs, mad that the fight was stopped too soon. Lewis and his cornermen have already left the ring, shielding themselves from the bottles and chairs. The police are attempting to restore order. Meanwhile, Ali is at ringside being interviewed by Howard Kossel. Ali is calling the ref all sorts of names that are being censored on the air. I'm sure there will be a rematch, but there will also be a suspension and a fine handed out to Drew Bundini Brown for pushing the ref. He may be arrested for assault. I am going under the ring until order is restored. 
wait a minute, wait. <laughs> That's what it came up with. My goodness. You know, but like I've, I've said in previous shows, you never know how long these fights are going to live. And this one, Ali and Lewis, I, you know, I'm going to say this, and some of you are going to disagree with me. I could, in a sense, see that happening. A, a, a referee like Cappuccino just looking at this and saying, you know, he's not throwing any punches. I think he's hurt. Therefore, to make sure he doesn't get severely hurt, I'm going to stop this fight. Now, I could see that, and I could see people going crazy about that. And, and But it's just, um, you know, like I say again, it's a theater of the mind. You know, the computer spits out its results, and I could put this in a thousand times. 50% of the time, Ollie would win, and 50% Joe Lewis would win. But it's just fun. It's really fun. And, it's just, you know, just like the way it ended, you could just see that, at a old, you know, place like the Polo Grounds, a ride breaking out because the fight ended in controversy. And if you know anything about Drew Bundy, Deanie Brown, he was notorious for like doing little things like push, pushing refs, crying, screaming, all of that. So I could see that, you know, and I could see Ollie just hanging on on the ropes, doing rope a dope, but this time, you know, the ref not buying it, you know. And you got to say too. You know, I know some of you are saying, well, you know, Joe Lewis was too slow. Have you ever looked at his fights? Yes, he didn't dance like Ali. He didn't dance around the ring. His hands were not that, it was, or fast. Not fast like Ali's, but look at that left jab. Joe Lewis was in like four inch punches that he would do was deadly, and they were fast. Look at the old fights. You know, the only fight I can think of. It comes close to Ali that Joe Lewis fought is the is Billy Kahn in their first fight. And if you look at the Billy Kahn fight, and it's on YouTube, you'll see Billy Kahn dancing around like Ali would do. And he would get his jabs in. He got his jabs in. He was beating Lewis until he got a little too cocky and tried to uh, exchange with Lewis, and Lewis knocked him out. But the thing is, I could see a fast fighter you know, doing that like an Ali, but deciding I'm not going to dance around here. I'm just going to fight him or do like Ali in this assimilation. Stand on the ropes, lay on the ropes, and let him punch himself out like George Foreman did. And a guy, you know, like Lewis, here's the acronym as far as how he fought people. I could see him just laying in it because he was a greatly conditioned, unlike George Foreman and some of the other fighters Ali fought who fell for the rope of dope, he was a sur- sur- superb athlete. And he could, you know, he could punch all day. If you look at some of his fights, he could punch all day. So I could see this happening. And if you want, listeners, if you want a rematch, Lewis and Ali, we'll put it in here. We'll definitely put it in here. And again, I haven't mentioned this, but um, let's just say this. You are the promoters of these fights. And folks out there have sent me... Um, potential bounce they want me to put in here and we're going to do them. We're going to definitely do them. But you're the promoters. You're the ones that can do, you know, that create these fights. And I'm looking forward to hearing from more promoters. Uh, future fights will include uh, I already have uh, a promoter who wants to see uh, in the middleweight division, Iran Barkley versus um, Marvelous Marvin, Marvin Hagler. That's going to happen. But there's so many fights out there. You know, people have been sending things in. So if you got a fight Send it to me. And when I say send it to me, you can send it to me on Facebook at Gregory, last name Rashid, R-A-S-H-E-E-D. You can go on YouTube and look for uh, Nourish by History, where these, where these uh, shows are. You can go also on Spreaker and leave your comments there. And also, I'm going to be part of a new network. And so the network, I'll be in the network is fairly new. It's been around since uh, 2020. But I'll be, and this show might be the first one that's on there, but uh, the Sports History Network, I'll be on there too. So you can check me out a little bit everywhere. Check the show out a little bit of everywhere. But the thing is, it's fun. And it's for you. It's for you, the listeners out there. And I hope you've enjoyed this fight today. And I'm not going anywhere yet, but uh, 
Hope you enjoyed the fight. And by the way, I want to say too, hi to my friends who listen every Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m. Mountain Time in Denver on KUHS, Denver.com, created by the wonderful Henry Archuleta. So I'm just hoping that you, you know, enjoy this fight today. And I'm going to um, always end with music. Before I do that, I just want to say that uh, I've created also a Patreon site. So if you're interested in being a Patreon for the show, just go to Patreon.com. Look for Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast, and you'll see the information. You know, not expensive at all. Also, you can um, do the same thing on buy me a coffee. If you want to do that, you know, just, just keep, and this just keeps the lights on, keeps me to buying new c- equipment, putting this online because it costs money to put these online. Just helps with that. You know, I'm a senior now, so I, you know, my my funds can be limited at times. So if you can do that, that'd be greatly appreciated. Getting this mic uh, helps, but I might get another mic. You know, I might get another one and more equipment and all, but uh, I definitely will. But this is about making this show sound as good as it can be. And you really appreciate it. So right now I'm going to play a song. This is from the early 30s. And this is uh, Alberta Hunter. She was a blues singer. And I'm going to play He Got a Punch Like Joe Lewis. So let's hear that on the Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast. about her his fist she's talking about another type of punch but anyway <laughs> hope you enjoyed that song again that's from the 30s uh alberta hunter and she's a fascinating uh individual if you don't know her she was a big time uh, blues singer along with bessie smith in the late 20s to the mid 30s and then she decided to uh, end this, her career and became a nurse and stopped performing until the late 70s she came back, she was in her 70s, and started performing again. And, you know, she did a number of albums. You may, you know, you can go on YouTube and see her performing on, like, the David Letterman show and some other shows. Just amazing. You know, didn't, didn't even lose a step. Didn't lose a step at all. Great performer. 
And I met her in 85, believe it or not, at the Baltimore uh, train station, coming from a Baltimore Orioles game, and she was there. And I shook her hand and all, just was honored to meet her. And I just love me some Alberta Hunter. So if you don't know Alberta, Alberta Hunter, check her music out. Check her music out. But again, I'm glad that you checked the show out today. I always say as I conclude the show, and by the way, before I say this, I want to say too, um, you can also, you know, besides um, being a patron and buying me a coffee, you can also um, go to um, support. You know, there are a number of uh, things I'd like you to do too. To support, you know, boxers don't have a union. And there are a number of efforts to try to get boxing, u- boxers unionized and also to get them something because a lot of boxers end up, they get a lot of money, you know, the ones that are like the top tier, but eventually they end up, some of them end up with nothing. For every Larry Holmes that's out there, there's a rich and Bernard Hopkins, they all kept their money, and Roy Jones Jr., so many, Sugar Ray Leonard, so many other folks. There are other fighters who just squander their money or they have some crooked manager and they have nothing. So there's a movement about to you know start some from funding just to provide for these athletes. And I wish I can give you names. I don't have the names off the top of their head, but they're online. You can find and just help these folks. Because if you're listening to this program, you love boxing. You love it. And let's support these fighters. Not when they're at their peak fighting or reminiscing about when they were young at their glory days and all that, thinking about old-time fighters like Joe Lewis. You know, but think about, you know, what they went through and do what you can to help them. That really be greatly appreciated. But again, this is Greg Rasheed. I hope you really have a good holiday weekend if you're tuning in on the weekend of the 14th and 15th of January honoring Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. You know, as I, again, I said, just if you want to, you know, just learn a little more about him and do something in your community. But I always say that. Go in love and go in peace. Help someone in your community, especially a young person, a senior, because we're all in this together. We're all in this together, no matter what our face, religion, wherever we are in this world, we're in the same world. So do what you can to help someone, help a neighbor, help a stranger, because you never know. Someone in your community may just need someone to talk to them, but you never know that. You may see someone, how many of you know your neighbors? How many know them? You know, maybe it's that time that you reach out to someone, especially a senior, especially a young person, too, you know, who might be friendless. You know, do what you can just to make your community a better place. And as I always say, when you wake up in the morning, get up, hug yourself, go to your mirror, look in that mirror and say, I love myself. If you're sight impaired, get up, hug yourself and say, I love myself. Because if you don't love yourself, you can't do anything. You're just functioning. That's all you're doing is just functioning. But love yourself. Take the time out to help someone in your community. Do what you can. And also, you know, share these shows. You know, tell your friends and tell another friend about what we're doing here on the Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast. But again, this is Greg Rasheed. We'll see you next time. Go in love and go in peace. Take care. And we're going to go outro with, uh, and I never say her name, but Donna. And Donna's not, uh, she's not um, AI. She's a real person. So let's have Donna take us out. See you next time on the podcast. Take care. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.